All right, uh, welcome. My name is Craig Tavern. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, some recent additions to geospatial support in Elasticsearch. Um, this was originally going to be a full talk, so we've had to compact it. I'm going to leave a lot of stuff out. Please come down to our booth. We have a booth downstairs with demos, and you can find out uh, everything about us down there. What I will uh, say briefly is Elastic, the company, about 3,000 people, uh, supports the Elastic platform. And uh, the two components in that platform that are most relevant to my talk is the Elasticsearch database itself, as well as the Kibana visualization tool. The entire thing can be downloaded onto your desktop, run on a single instance, a cluster, or on the cloud, and we have an Elastic Cloud hosting service for, for that as well. The three new uh, features I'd like to focus on, map vector tiles, uh, hex aggregations, and geoline aggregations. But before doing that, just a very brief summary. As I said, come down to our booth, you'll learn more. The visualization side is very rich. We can do uh, all kinds of statistics and aggregations, as well as geospatial support with maps. And you can assemble everything into a customized dashboard to suit whatever needs you have. Here is an example of a dashboard containing various maps and uh, charts and statistics of a volcanic eruption. Now that's the Kibana side of things. On the back end, if you attended Nick Nizia's talk before, you probably know everything about this. We based it on Lucene, and Lucene's geospatial uh, features are what power this. Um, two sides to this, the search capabilities, uh, quite a few geospatial capabilities in search, as well as aggregations. We can aggregate in buckets where you put documents into buckets based on geospatial criteria, as well as geometrics, which means we produce new geometries out of other geometries. So the uh, features I want to talk about, the one that's most interesting, um, because this is a massive performance enhancement that we have at the moment, uh, when, a, when any query or maybe your visualization tool like a map makes a request to the back end, you give the map bounds and you want to get the data for that. If you stream all the data in its original GeoJSON format, it can uh, be very slow and take a lot of memory, especially since your bounds might intersect a polygon that's massive and off screen. So this is a huge performance problem. It's a well-known problem, many people have solved it. We've solved it now as well using uh, map boxes, uh, map vector tiles. And uh, the way this works is everything's tiled server side and that results in uh, geometry simplification as well as binary compression and the tiling allows client side um, caching. So this means uh, that you get performance and uh, memory advantages. I'm going to scale, I'm going to do a little demo here. On the left is the fast one and the right is the old one. And if I pan up and back down to the same place, you see the old one will take a few seconds before it uh, gets loaded again, whereas the, first, the left one you don't even notice it. Also, if you zoom out, we had to, in Kibana, have a uh, memory optimization in order to save the map. So we immediately switched to some kind of aggregation and clustering so that we didn't load those tiles anymore, but I mean, load the vector data anymore. But on the new system, we can keep the tiles all the way out. You can zoom out to the whole planet and you'll get good performance. The last two I mentioned very, very briefly, uh, you should come to our booth and we'll do demos, but hex aggregation based on Uber's um, A3 library allows you to do aggregations instead of on Mercator tiles, which are highly distorted, as you all know, on a hex grid, which gives you much better area equivalence across the, uh, the planet. And geoline aggregation, where you can take tracks of points and aggregate them based on some common factor, like a, a flight identity or something like that, and then sort them by time and create a geoline. And uh, you can build your own applications, accessing the server itself. Here's hex on a, a simple application that took 200 lines of code that we used on Monday's workshop. Thank you, Craig. I have to cut you. Thank you very much. Sorry. And I will call you.